Hello, welcome and thanks for joining on our YouTube channel for our second live broadcast of the day. We know that your time is precious. So whether you're with us live or whether you're watching on demand, thank you for taking the time. Now you might be thinking that I'm working from home, but I'm actually joining you here from Kantar Media's Innovation Suite, our home demonstration environment within our London offices. London actually was home to our most recent World Audiences Summit, which brought together industry leaders across the world. That summit, titled Unlocking Value, saw us learn from each other's experience and discuss how the cross-platform and cross-media services that we've designed and delivered are helping thousands of media businesses to deliver on their growth strategies. Taking experiences from that event and our latest thinking, we've created guides for those seeking to reach, grow and monetize their audiences. And over the next 40 minutes or so, we'll take you on a tour of some of the findings and hear from our clients and industry leaders on what's most important to them. You will be amongst the first people to access the guides, for which I'll share some details later on. So, if you're watching on demand, sit back and enjoy the broadcast. And if you're joining us live, then please do get involved in the conversation. We'd love to hear your feedback and your ideas, as it's you, our broad client base, that define our mission. So, on YouTube, press that subscribe button, share your thoughts in the comments, and on social, using the hashtag Audiences Unlocked. But getting involved isn't just limited to social media. So for those who entered, some of you will be joining us later to play a special edition of Play Your Cards Right. So stand by because we might just be calling on you. But for now, down to business. The call to change, to transform, is one that we hear so often now in our industry. Media and markets are continuing to undergo unprecedented transformation, accelerated by new technologies, the arrival of disruptors, and changing audience behaviours. And that's delivered an array of challenges for all of us. Advertisers are seeking how and where to play their own cards right and get the most value from their media budget. And that's never been more important, as our first speaker now explains. We're going in to try and defend media budgets and it is, we are rightly being held more and more to account of what we're doing for the business and what we're bringing in, right? So, and e even if I could quote a unified reach measurement, even that is not enough at the moment, right? Like uh, if I go into the C CFO and say, don't worry, I'm gonna deliver you 70% reach, the challenge back will be, so what, right? <laughs> so, to your, so to your point, right, the first, the first step is, you know, some kind of unified measurement of you know who we're actually reaching but the the goal and and what we need i think as advertisers is what the business impact of that is and there's an intermediary step of you know unified measurement and cross media measurement but ultimately what i'm challenged on is what we're delivering top line and bottom line that's what it boils down to So as you heard there from Andy, unified measurement is the first step to justifying media budgets. And indeed, we're using our own campaign audience validation tool to enable more advertisers to understand their unique audience reach across media forms. Ultimately, the goal to strengthen the consumer signal through better cross-media measurement is becoming realised. Around the world, advertisers as well as agencies are taking a more proactive role to deliver against this. There's clear momentum, but where do we start? Barat from Group M has some advice. Where it really breaks down is the video piece. 
Mm. Uh, where the dollars then fragment between linear OTT, mm. you know, online video, programmatic video, social video, gaming video, all of these are channels. Mm. Um, and so the focus for us is pretty much video. And I think that's where the opportunity is. That's where I think two thirds of our dollars are as a group. Okay. Um, and that's, that's kind of the focus and that's where most of our work is uh, happening. We can't wait. So I think advertisers and buy side will have to step up. We'll have to fund the measurement system and not just let the networks and the sell side carry the burden. Uh, only then will change happen. And so that commitment to step up, to be more active in the direction and funding of media measurement is surely welcomed by all because understanding viewers across platforms is a need for everyone. Broadcasters and platforms especially want to understand how best to navigate and make sense of the changing landscape. The goal of measuring audiences across all viewing forms Understanding how online forms interlock with linear is now crucial and it's increasing as the number of viewing forms we're measuring expands. That need is guiding the strategic development of media owner services and helping determine investments in both content and delivery. Cross-platform measurement now provides the definitive source of reliable data required to secure and increase advertising revenue for media owners and offers advertisers a more complete and accurate picture. The Brazilian market, for one, has been a trailblazer in adopting cross-platform measurement standards, with data now showing that linear and online are both strong. Some networks in this market are choosing to distribute their content via carriage deals with YouTube and video sharing platforms, whilst others are also building their own streaming services too. Channel 4 in the UK was an early evangelist for the adoption of online forms into its strategy and has adopted a platform neutral approach. It's essential that they know how to leverage every option as Martin Greenbank now explains. Now we're at a place where even the established media, there's no longer a separation between digital and uh, more traditional linear channels. It is one and the same, and this is how we start to see the world. They're just distribution methods for TV. Um, uh, and that's, uh, TV is still the same, it's still about programs, it's still about video advertising. You can watch our streaming player, all four, on 28 different ways you can access it, whether that be through platforms, pucks, sticks, boxes, operating systems, interfaces, apps, consoles, or other services. All of those are actually the opportunities for us. They're not seen as threats. Um, we do co-pros with Netflix. We do co-pros with Amazon Prime. You know, we do partnerships with all these platforms to enable our content to reach our, our users because we are a publisher broadcaster. We're not trying to own this space, we're trying to leverage this space. The problem that TV measurement had over the last 10 years that's now been corrected, this is unmatched viewing. Remember, that was, the, that was the Tony's yellow bit. Caused us broadcasters a real pain because we needed to understand what that was. It was growing steadily because in there was the mix of all the stuff that wasn't attributed back to TV broadcast content. Because of the new measurement that Barb has been able to enable with the focal meter and the new people meter uh, panel that we're now rolling out, we're able to bring those levels back down to the kind of levels that we saw back 10 years ago. And in fact, we understand now where that viewing is going. Which means, don't forget, if we have a platform neutral uh, distribution strategy, it gives us as broadcasters a massive advantage of understanding where we need to do these partnerships, how we need to leverage uh, uh, the relationships that we're building, and where we're going to find the viewers that, uh, not just for now, but in the future. So partnerships play a key role in Channel 4's platform neutral strategy, but how is the data being used? We're joined by James Hesselin from ITV, another UK broadcaster, who is here to share how data is helping them to grow their audience and their business. Welcome, James, and thank you for joining us today. Hi, thank you for having me. A 
few months ago, you launched your exciting new video on demand platform, ITVX. So what's so different about it and how does it work alongside your linear programming? Yeah, so with ITVX, what we were really trying to do is refresh our VOD strategy. So obviously ITV Linear has a very dominant position in the market and essentially what we were trying to do is kind of bring that up to speed and get our VOD service to be as in line as our linear programming is. And what we were trying to do with that is essentially challenge a historical um, perception of our old service, ITV Hub, which is that for some people they felt like it was more of just a pure catch-up service. So if you missed Cory the previous evening, you'd catch up on it the following day. Whereas what we really wanted to do was look at it as a service that people would come to as a destination to discover content, which is the sort of place where you develop those really strong need states and you think of the service in a much more... Yeah, just a much more emotional, strong way where you're more likely to come back to it. But that isn't to say that Linear Program doesn't also have a strong place for us as well. There will always be programs such as Britain's Got Talent, I'm a Celeb, Love Island that always do really well for us as a service and we always want to focus on as well. So you and your teams must have spent a lot of time preparing for the launch. And with ITV being the largest channel in the UK, commercial channel in the UK, what was your goal with ITV? Was was it that you were targeting existing audiences or new ones? Yes, like you mentioned, we're, because we're the lar largest commercial channel in the UK, we knew that ITVX would be a mass reach campaign, which is what we had in mind when we thought about a strategic segmentation. I know segmentations can get a bit complex, but with this one we decided to keep it very straightforward by focusing on just two factors. So the first factor was looking at the uh, ITV viewing in a given week. So that could be ITV viewing on live TV, catch up, recorded, anything like that. So we decided to look at ITV viewing and the second variable was looking at their VOD usage in a given week as well and looking at their overall VOD consumption. And when we did this, what we essentially identified was a core group who we thought we wanted to focus on for ITVX in our campaign. And this group essentially have a very cursory relationship with ITVX, so they watch some ITV, of ITV, pardon me, with a very, they watch some ITV but not a lot, and they also watch at least some VOD, so they're not completely against the linear, the VOD world, but they don't also watch a tremendous amount of VOD either. And with that, we identified them as being about 45% of the UK population, and because it's such a huge group, being half the UK population nearly, we felt like we needed to get a really strong view of them and what their viewing habits were. And that's where the uh, Barb Dovetail data came in to be hugely helpful for us. And um, that being the latest development in the Barb survey where you get to look at online and SVOD viewing. So four months in since the launch of ITVX, how is your new on-demand platform performing? Yeah, so it's still very much early days, you know, four months in, it's, you could definitely say it's definitely its infancy as a streaming service. However, as of this weekend, so this is very much hot off the press, we have uh, managed to hit a very strong milestone, which is one billion streams, which obviously is a great achievement for us to reach only four months in. And it's also a very nice number to reach because you know, it's quite a round number, so it helps me being able to remember that. But um, in that time, we've had a lot of big tentpole moments in the calendar. So we had the 2022 World Cup, we've had Winter Love Island, we've had I'm a Celebrity, those are all the sort of big tentpole moments that bring people onto the service. However, in that time, we've also had a lot of big originals as well that have come on as well, and they kind of help keep people on the service. So just to name a few examples, there was Without Sin starring Vicky Mittler. That came out on the launch month for ITVX, and that was really successful, and is actually due to air on ITV1 next month. So it'll be really interesting to see how it performs on our linear programming as well. And in addition to that, we more recently had The Twelve, which is an Australian drama starring Sam Neill. That came out in the last few months and really got a lot of attraction as well. So a lot of, as Love Island started to die down, we saw a lot of traffic towards watching this programme. So it just goes to show that with these big events, you also can fill it in with a lot of the original programming as well. Thank you very much, James. That's right. We'll be joined again by James a little later when we'll hear more about the value of data, not only for your own platform, but for competing platforms. Much of the work James talked about is underpinned by the technology developed and delivered by our teams. Hailed as a once in a generation update of daily audience reporting, the changes have been led by Barb in the UK. 
So let's hear from their chief executive, Justin Sampson, about the wider industry evolution. Barb's gold standard is no longer just about live and consolidated seven-day TV set viewing. Now, to get to this place, Barb has worked closely with all our industry stakeholders, with Kantar, with our other research agencies, on many phases of evolution. Understanding people, it's a theme, not just devices and distribution, is a fundamental part of our remit. And this is why it's critical to have a high-quality panel of homes at the core of our service. And the great news is we're committed to the largest ever increase in our reporting sample. We're going up to 7,000 homes, which is close to 16,000 people. But our service isn't just about having a panel. Our audience ratings are underpinned by the integration of big data. Since 2015, we've independently collected and audited a census count of viewing to broadcasters, VOD services. And we harness these device-based data with complementary people-based data sourced from our panel. With the cooperation of the broadcasters, we started reporting audiences to their streaming services in 2015. And then last November, we delivered a once-in-a-generation upgrade, which means our daily audience reporting now includes SVOD and video sharing platforms, even without their active participation in Barb. And this reflects a long-standing ambition to deliver comprehensive insight into what people watch and, and our determination to extend our reporting to embrace services such as Amazon Prime Video, Disney+, Netflix, TikTok, and YouTube. And it means the television and advertising industry now has access to independent, objective, and transparent measurement of audiences to these streaming services. And since we recorded Justin's presentation, Netflix now subscribe to audience measurement services in both the UK and Brazil. As native video on demand platforms find value in industry audience measurement data, it's never been more important for all media companies to seek a single view of their audience in order to unlock sustained growth. But to truly unlock the power of cross-platform data, the whole industry needs to become a catalyst for change. It's why we're so pleased that media companies in Canada and Turkey are trailblazers too in this wider transformation. Markets like these are expanding their measurement systems too, so that both the buy and the sell side can reap the benefits of cross-platform data. This is a subject that Kristin and Metin will now elaborate on. I think one of the challenges though with unlocking the data is, or unlocking the value, is the data itself doesn't really tell the story. The people who use the data tell the story. And I know that, that sounds so obvious, but if we think about who's in this room, who sits on the committees, um, who thinks about the investment behind a type of product like this, it's actually not the folks on the ground using the data and trying to make it real. Um, it's the analysts, it's the junior buyers, it's our team leads, our managers who are actually trying to get into this data set and say, how do I use this to improve what I put out there every day? And I think they're the folks we sometimes forget to include in these conversations. And that's actually where the value is because none of us have time to, to mine that data day to day and fit it into the process and into a media buy. That's their job. So I think we really need to rally that tier of folks who care to make this data come to life. When you put all the data in the key, you make a bigger picture or more meaningful picture because you should create or imagine in your mind the picture of the real world. And if you don't have all the data together and if, the, if you have data but they are not speaking each other, you are like a blind person in the middle of storm. You know? Or, to put it another way, if it's not measured, it's not managed. What we've learned from early adopter markets is that it's not just about long-term value. The early insights are informing how our clients implement, adapt, and evolve their online video strategies to reach, engage, 
and monetize audiences. Getting an early view of the performance of a native video on demand platform in relation to a TV network's own services can have a huge benefit in guiding the development of channel strategies and program commissioning, as Rachel from the BBC and Tony from ITV now explain. Having access to the da this data is the most exciting thing I have seen in years in, in TV measurement. And every single week, I think we are surprised, curious, fascinated in the data that we're seeing. And the first moment for me, when, when we had the test data and we could look at Squid Game, and you could look at something that was being talked about as a cultural phenomenon, but you could actually see the scale of that audience. And you can see the audience build day in, day out. And you could see the interaction with other data, such as social media. To be able to uncover that, to see how many children were watching Squid Game, to see the relative size of it, as you, as you were saying, compared to broadcast, it, it was actually nowhere near as big as some of our biggest shows. So it, that, you know, one single show unlocked so much potential for us in terms of how we could use that data. This is a whole new world. You know, we're we're going to have this huge kind of AVOD service um, in November called ITVX, um, and we need different kinds of viewing in it. When you are building a, an online VOD service, you need these two types of viewing. Um, and I think without this barb data, I don't think it would have been quite as clear to us what to commission and what to buy. Rachel and Tony talked about the value of cross-platform measurement, driven by the critical need for content owners and distributors to act rather than just react to know how to navigate this new terrain and to play their cards right for their business. Kantar Media's TGI Global Quick View study tells us that heavy video on demand viewers worldwide are 50% more likely than average to prefer to watch game shows. And in that spirit, and to bring a bit of a, a stopgap here uh, in this live broadcast, it brings us neatly to our own live unlocking value edition of Play Your Cards Right. Now, for those of you who don't know, Play Your Cards Right is a TV game show that's based on the American show Card Sharks. We've made a few changes, of course, but the principle is the same. What we'll do is we'll uncover the first card and one of our contestants will then guess if the next card is higher or lower. They get it right, they'll move to the next card. They get it wrong and they're out. Everyone who manages to reach the end will win a £100 online gift card to spend with a retailer of their choice. Now this truly is live, so thank you to all those who entered uh, or played in our first broadcast and to those who entered for the second broadcast. We randomly chose three people to play uh, and we've been in touch with them, so dependent on connections we uh, will see how many we get through. Uh, but I'm hoping that we've got our first caller on the line. Hello. Hello, John. Hello, Lucia. I, there we go. Now, that, so, Lucia, I recognise the voice. Lucia, where are you calling in from? I'm from Romania. From Romania. Excellent. Fantastic. Thank you for joining the, the live broadcast. So, let us move to uh, the, the, the card. So, your first card here, Lucia, if you can see it, is the Queen. The queen. Now, would you want to go higher or lower than a queen? Lower. Lower than a queen, okay. Let's have a quick look. Okay. Good progress there. We're on to eight. So you've got an eight. And then after the eight, what do you want to go, higher or lower? Lower. Lower. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Just thought I'd check. <laughs> It's a four. Fantastic, Lucia, you've won there. Fantastic, we will be sending you a £100 gift voucher for your choice. There we go, you've played your cards right. Well done, thank you, Lucia. Take care. Okay, no, knowledge and money, knowledge and money together. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Now I may have a second contestant. Uh, you sure? I do indeed. Hello. What's your name and where are you calling from? Yes. Okay. Just thought I'd check. It's a four. It is a four. It's a four. Well, obviously, that that's, the, the stream is a, is a little bit behind you. So, if I could ask you again, hello, what is your name and, and where are you calling from? Thank you. Okay, we're obviously having some connection issues there, but it is good to at least demonstrate that this definitely is certainly a live broadcast. Let me see if we've got our third contestant. Um, potentially no. Well, maybe if we can get the contestant number two back later on, we'll return to this game. Luckily, the realization of cross-platform measurement in markets throughout the world is not a game of chance. As we've heard, and as you'll see in the, broad, in the reports that are now available to download here on the screen, Cross-platform measurement is delivering tangible returns on our clients' research investment. In Canada, in our partnership with Numeris, we've been acting early because engaging more data users in the process can unlock more value. Here's Neil to tell us more. So, just a few words on the journey. I find the journey is fascinating. So we took a different approach. Um, and this was a multi-year, highly, highly engaged process with clients and the industry. So we chose a release early, learn, and modify approach. We've never done that before. And we released three data sets to a select group of clients so they can start learning the data, getting comfortable with the data, providing us feedback on the data so we can improve it. And we spent 13 months working with clients in the industry before we ultimately launched it. VAM is, for us, is generating new insights and key learnings. And Numeris has been sharing regular insights um, with our clients and the industry as they continue to learn the data. So what has been the market reaction? It's been positive. Um, they're adopting it. <clears throat> they recognize it's complicated. Um, and like I said, it's, it's blowing up some myths and it's giving us new perceptions on behavior. Thanks, Neil. So, moving early enables media owners, content distributors and platforms to act and not just react. And cross-platform measurement provides a realistic picture of how platforms, devices and services complement each other. Our report puts this into context. UK data shows that the majority of long-form video streaming is now on large connected TV screens that are likely to have higher co-viewing than mobile devices. And of course, measuring streaming audiences and co-viewing on smart TVs offers the potential to identify and sell to much larger audiences. Cross-platform measurement now brings clarity to an ecosystem in which there's a real danger of mixing up variables. Marta San Pedro from Dentsu tells us more. We usually approach uh, like the, the audiovisual data with three different variables. It's not the same uh, impression. So it's devices, users, and people. An impression is a device. <coughs> so then uh, it, it happened that in uh, in mobile, it is approximately the same that a user, but uh, in big screens, you have a <coughs> average 1.4 users per, mm. per device. So you cannot just say, oh, this is an impression, an impression, and just add, it, mm. add them up. Mm. You have to go from <coughs> devices, from users, mm. and then add the profile to people. Mm. So that is just three points, but all over the, the, the ecosystem, people are mixing the variables. So we just have these three levels, very simple, yeah. to approach and try to, to, to have the, the, the data that can be grouped together yeah. with the same level of detail. You cannot just say, this is an impression for TV is the same. No, it's not exactly the same. Yeah. You, uh, 
in audiovisual, in big screens, you have more users That's right. than impressions. Understanding how linear streaming and on-demand delivery forms work together has never been more essential. And I'm joined here once again by ITV's James Hesselin to unpack this a little more. James, so you've got data coming through multiple sources. So there's linear viewing, live, on-demand, through your online players, and a whole host of other sources. And the bar panel data is at the centre of these. So what's unique and important about it? Yeah, so I was at a conference back in December of last year, and this was looking at TV and VOD advertising. So naturally, there was a lot of broadcasters and streaming services there, as well as some really interesting insights from research agencies. And one of the phrases that kept coming up in relation to streaming services is that up until recently, they had been marking their own homework in reference to the fact that there's so many competing and distinctive performance metrics that they all use to measure success. So I think that's one of the really pivotal things about Barb, which speaks to how good it is in that the fact that it is the gold standard of audience measurement and that everyone understands that it is this sort of centralised form of measurement that we all use and all understand because we know what success looks like and it comes from the Barb measurements. And it's also something that from speaking to my colleagues who work in international research, it isn't something that exists in a lot of other markets that they work in as well. So it does show that for the UK, we are really lucky to have this form of measurement in Barb and all of the additional dovetail data that we have with it as well. So Netflix are now subscribing to audience measurement in the UK. What unique value does this data offer you? So of course it's still relatively early days since Netflix subscribed, but I think firstly it's a really strong endorsement for the Barb data that Netflix appreciate the value of it and are willing to buy into it. And I think getting this SVOD data for us as broadcasters is really insightful because obviously before we've been able to look at linear performance and even beat our own BVOD performance and understand that. But looking at the SVOD services, it's traditionally been something that I think has been described as a walled garden in the past where they give us some scant bits of information about their performance, but not enough for us to really go off of. So by them joining the bar panel and being able to understand their data through Dovetail, it really gives us a much clearer understanding of what success looks like for our SVOD service and how we can compare this with success a lot across linear channels or our own BVOD channels. And I think that's become even more important after lockdowns because we saw online viewing accelerate a lot across different nations. And it's really important to be able to study the SVOD viewing and understand the audiences that attract it. And then finally, what's next? So for ITVX, there's obviously a lot of growth still to happen, but there's a lot of big events coming up, uh, big tentpole events for ITV in the calendar. So we have the return of Love Island, and in addition to that, we've got several big sporting events, including the Women's Football World Cup, the Men's Rugby World Cup, and in the world of reality, we even have the return of Big Brother. So those are all really exciting, big tentpole moments that will draw people in, in addition to the um, amount of originals that we have coming up for ITVX as well. But outside of that, there's one metric that we really hope to continue improving as the service grows. And that's this metric that we use a lot called spontaneous consideration. And with that, we're trying to understand is um, it's essentially asking people, when you sit down and think of something to watch in an evening, what services or broadcasters come to mind? And at the moment, for a lot of people, there are several services that come to mind before they think of ITVX. And what we really want to do is get ITVX further up that list so that it's top of mind, so that when you sit down in the evening and think about something to watch, ITVX is there top of mind and you're watching our content. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, James. That's all right. ITV, like many media owners, are continually assessing how they unlock even more value from their viewing data, allowing them to demonstrate the efficiency of their medium and enable agencies and advertisers to optimise audiences across different platforms. It's far from a local phenomenon. A&E networks reach audiences in over 100 countries, and we spoke to Daniela Martinez, who confirmed the need for the relative value of different platforms and devices to be appraised.
A, a big, big challenge for us on the advertising side is actually how do you, you know, prove to the advertisers the, the effectiveness and the efficiency of it. And many times, you know, on the linear side, it's quite a challenge because we're still talking about reach and we're still talking about GRPs, but now the online is talking about leads and conversion. So it's, you know, how is it that we're gonna close the gap? And our pandemic was actually work on a total audience tool that would allow us to prove to the advertisers, well, to plan, to optimize the audiences across the different platforms that we offered, and then prove that effectiveness and that efficiency. That has been the game changer, because when we go to them, to advertisers, to our partners, we talk about their KPIs, and they're in the center, you know? I think that the challenge right now is actually how do we all come together to do that innovation, that next step? Because as a whole, or in isolation, we're not gonna be able to change that. So, you know, we're, we're pleased with what we've done. We, we've, let's say that revenue is it's, it's growing because we're able to prove that. But at the same time, we know that we need to go that next step. And so widening the scope of measurement to include online video streaming means networks and distributors like A&E can demonstrate the strengths of their content and environments and can compare all viewing forms using the most appropriate metrics. Metrics which the entire industry is calling for. So whilst the opportunity to source data directly from devices, platforms and users can expand possibilities, we know it's one dimensional, often unverified and operating within the confines of a siloed platform. The World Federation of Advertisers framework for cross-media measurement supports the need to move beyond isolated data feeds towards more comprehensive, transparent measurement. Advertiser-led cross-media measurement projects are taking it one step further, moving from talk to action. Clearly the North Star and the WFA framework gives us the broad aspiration uh, to start with uh, deduplicated reach and frequency for video and for digital display because the way we see this is that we would like to see, or advertisers would like to see us move from a world in which uh, we're dominated by proprietary black box systems that are based on impressions uh, to a world where uh, you are bringing in a rich and accountable audited source of data uh, with, with multiple metrics within them uh, and standards incorporated within that, uh, which would include um, duration, completion, viewability, screen size, sound on, sound off, uh, all of the basis, uh, all of which could form the basis on which uh, advertisers and agencies can really start to ascribe that value uh, and which will allow media owners to be able to market themselves on the basis of the real role they play uh, within the media mix, which is by definition going to be an apples with pears media mix uh, as you start to move into uh, uh, cross-media measurement. And in fact, we're working closely with Phil and his team, contributing core components of our products for their origin project. Well, that just about brings us to the end. I'd like to finish by saying a big thank you to all our speakers, to Bally and to James for joining us here in the Innovation Suite. And of course, to our contestants who played some of their cards right, or indeed for Lucia, all of her cards right. And I'm sorry to Susanna for the connection issues uh, and hope you can join us for a future game in the future. Our interactive reports provide more detail, including data, opinion, and best practice from earlier adopter markets around the world. Our reports are designed to equip both the buy and the sell side to unlock value from cross-media measurement. They're available now by visiting the links here or kantar.com forward slash unlocking value. Or you can use the link in the comments box or in the description bar if you're watching on demand. The rapid adoption of streaming, driven particularly by smart TVs and IP TV delivery, is making cross-platform measurement a case of when, not if. And so the value placed on audience measurement to build, retain and engage viewers has never been more significant. We hope that the learnings we've shared 
show how you too can unlock growth, maximise the monetization of content, and deliver improved planning and evaluation of campaign performance across platforms. Thank you for joining us today. We're proud to be playing our part as Kantar Media to drive growth for our clients and the entire industry. And we look forward to continuing the journey with you, unlocking long-term growth and value for all. Until next time, goodbye.